What's up, Throd Squad? So today we're back working on the Warrior 350, and today we got a surprise for you guys. We actually have what looks like it's the carburetor rebuild kit. Came right here from the box. Came from Rocky Mountain ATV MC. So let's take a look at this. We'll open it up right now. Hopefully, this is the right part, or else today's video will be a bust. So it looks to be a K&L Genuine Carb Repair Kit. Um, and it looks like it's got the main jet, needle jet, oh, all types of goodies. Well. Let's start taking this thing apart, and we'll get it all put together. All right, guys. So first thing first, let's take this rear seat off. One lever, pull right off. Done. Now we're gonna get into here, and we're gonna do things the easy way. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna unscrew these five bolts right here on top of these Phillips heads. We're gonna take this, we're gonna undo the Phillips bolt on the other side that connects the intake boot to the carburetor right here. And then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take off this little vent tube and I'm gonna take this off, pull that right off, and then we'll get to taking the carb off. I'm having the air box opened up and you can just see how dirty this air filter is. It's just want to state for the record this is my first time ever doing this on the squad I'm not an expert um, so if I can do it you can do it all right guys so I just pulled this gas line off and as I pulled it off I lifted it up and then what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this gas right here I'm just gonna dump it into a can that way I'm not pouring gas all over the place I could have started it up and ran it dry but the way it was running I just didn't want it to I just didn't want to run in and have it misfiring completely the whole time. So I figured it was safer to do it this way. Alright, so now what we're going to want to do is we're going to pull the carb down. Take it off. And we're going to bring it down just a little bit. I'm going to get the Phillips screwdriver in here. And I'm going to unscrew these Phillips bolts right here. And we're going to take each one off. I don't know if they're different sizes, so I lay them down in the same pattern that I take them off in. So we're gonna unscrew all of these. Now that we have them off, what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna pull, want to pull this cover off right here.
Oh wow, very clean in here. Well, looks like everything's working properly in here. It's really nice to see everything be as clean as it is. So we're gonna wanna pull this cable out right here. And you wanna be very careful. Because you want to take this, slide it down, pull it out. And right there, the cable is off. So you're gonna wanna save this little piece right here and set it to the side. Next step you wanna to, to wanna to do is you wanna take this bottom vent line for the overflow right here and you're gonna to wanna to just pull it off and take it right off the bottom. Alright guys, so what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're gonna to wanna to grab this and you're gonna to wanna to slide it up. And then once you get it up what you want to do is you want to grab this piece right here and you're going to want to turn it. There you go. Just to loosen it up. And then you can use your fingers to unscrew the rest of it. And once you have it unscrewed all the way, then you can gently slide your cable all the way out and that's how you remove the carburetor completely out of the warrior all right guys so what i'm going to do first is i'm just going to unscrew the bottom bowl where the float is take these bolts off and i like to set them in order that i take them off so that way i know which bolt goes where So it's just four bolts holding the bottom on. We're gonna pull the bottom right off. Oh. Well. We're going to pull this old gasket off because I have a new one. So we're not going to need this. But it looks to be very dirty in there. So I'm going to set that off to the side. We're going to pull this main jet out first. It looks to be pretty clean. And then we have a smaller jet right here. We're going to take a smaller screwdriver and just insert it right here on the bottom and unscrew it. And be careful not to strip this out. I think that's it. So that came out. And don't forget, there's a brass washer on the main jet, which I just had in my hand. I should probably take that out. We'll set it back over here with the main. So we take this jet out right here, and it's very tiny. So let's see if I can see through it which it was so clogged you guys probably won't be able to see on the camera but you cannot see zero light through it so that right there could be part of the problem that I was having so good thing for us it came with replacement ones so just to make it quick and easy while we're doing it at the same time I'm just gonna throw these back in and of course I don't know if you guys will be able to see it on camera but you can see light right through it so I'm going to take this, going to check through to the bottom to make sure that it's not clogged. So let's open this up right here. 
take a quick peek through there. Let's see. All this seems to be working pretty good. But what I am going to do is I'm actually going to take a little bit of carb cleaner and shoot it through. There we are. Now I'm going to take this new jet. I'm going to install it right in there. And screw it right back in. Doesn't have to be too tight. Now we're gonna get the main right here. And I noticed that it didn't come with a new washer. So we're gonna take the washer right here, throw it right back on, and we're going to uh, wash. First, let me just spray a little bit of car cleaner in here. Now we're going to reinstall this main jet. Once again, snug, not super tight. So now we're going to take a look at this float real fast. I want it to be about a half inch from here to here. And I can pretty much guarantee you that's worn out. So what we're going to do is I'm going to grab smallest screwdriver I have in this little husky set I got and we are going to insert it right here on the end just to push this through to be a little tight in there. Of course, this quad is in 1987, so it probably has, hasn't been taken apart ever. So I'm just gonna set this down right here on here. Just give it a couple little taps. There we are. And hopefully I can come on the other side and just it out. Oh, it appears to be they're very good. So let's give it a couple more love taps. There we are. Now you can slide that out. Now here's where you want to be a little careful. It seems to be in okay condition, but it is a little worn and as you can see, if you can see, it has a crack on it right there. So let me take that. I'll set this off to the side. I'll inspect the float bowls to see if there's any cracking or damage on them. And it seems like they're in okay condition. So I'm going to take my screwdriver right now, unscrew this one Phillips head bolt right here. I'm going to put this back in here like this. That way I know where it goes. Just a nice little tip I like to use to pull stuff apart. Now this. Oh yeah. This was worn out. So 
So I just took this piece off right here. I inspected the inside. Um, you can tell that the rubber bushing around it is definitely worn out. So I'll just take this, throw it over here in the old pile of old parts. We'll grab the new one. And you can see the new one, obviously. It's much nicer. And it has a screen on it, too. I wonder if that screen's supposed to stay on there or not. Just install it right back and in. I'm assuming that it does stay on there. Actually fits in there very nice. So now, what we're going to do, is we're going to put this piece back on. Set it in there first. Set it on there. Once again, doesn't have to be too tight. Make sure that it seats nicely in there. And that should do it. Now we're gonna grab this piece right here, which goes right here on the float, like so. So it should hang in there. Actually, it should hang in here like this. So right here like so. so but it looks like this kit has to go one main setting on it. So we'll set that in there just like so. We'll grab our pin. We'll throw our pin back in here. Right in there. Just like so. Line it up. Right there to the bottom. And what we'll do is we'll just give it a couple little love taps. It looks like it's seating in there pretty decent. Good thing about having uh, needle nose pliers is I can just grab it and squeeze this down. There we are. Nice and seated, perfect. So now let's see. Oh yeah, much better. Definitely a big difference just on that. So that looks to be all clean. We have this main spot right here, which it looks very clean. You can see all the way through it right here. This is where it goes up into the guide for the for the throttle. So when you when you actually pull the throttle, this tube goes down right here and pushes this down for the gas, for the accelerator. So I'm gonna spray a little bit of carb cleaner in here. Clean that out. And I believe the kit came. Oh, it did not did not come with a new one. So what we're gonna do, is you can see it's a little dirty here, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna spray it off real fast. Clean it up. And I'm also gonna spray this out. Let it soak around there. I'm gonna use my finger just to scrub the bottom just because it is completely filthy. I don't know if you can tell, it's all murky in there now. Just wanna clean it all out. Make sure everything's all clean. But, we know that this works, because last time I started the quad up, we had gas just run out of it. So, this right here is the screw, so you can unscrew right here to drain the carb of gas if you're storing it for the winter, which I could have done before I removed the carb, but I knew I was going to be dealing with a mess anyway, so I wasn't too worried about it. So, we'll get this. Make sure you put the spring back down the way you found it, seated in there just like so. Make sure that it can freely move up and down. You want it to be with as little resistance as possible. So we get that in there, and we're gonna take this gasket that we have right here, and we are gonna put the new gasket right in like so. It should fit in nice and easy. Um, I've been told if you get these things wet, to just set them out in the sun and let them dry for a little while. But Seeing as how this is a new gasket and I'm not reusing the old one, I'm just going to set it down in place. 
it seems to be seating very nice slightly raised but of course once I screw it down it'll all seat perfectly into place where it needs to be so as you can see it has little grooves in here which hold it in place so you could go around and press it all in there as best you can but that's probably going to be good enough for now so I'm going to set this right here slide this right back in and it should fit in very easy you shouldn't have to force anything so like I said, I got my order. We'll put this back into place. Screw this down. Congratulations, guys, if you followed us this far in the video. We're about halfway done. Not too much to it. A lot of common sense. So, we're just going to go, and I like to do a crisscross pattern whenever I'm tightening something down, especially with a new gasket, just to make sure that it seats nicely. Do it once over. Good. So, now that I have that put back on, we're gonna move on to the next step. So guys, I had to take this back off. I actually forgot to reinstall this little bull right here. So, I'm gonna put that back on, I'm gonna put this back on, and we'll move on to the next step. So right here is the idle air screw. So we're gonna unscrew this right now, which I believe, based on Tesla replacement. Yay! I didn't even mess with this when I was trying to see if the carb would run without it earlier but here it is you could tell the needles a little worn a little worn down and there's also a screw in there I mean a spring there's also a spring in here so I'm gonna pull this spring out right here and unfortunately I was looking at the new one it did not come with a new spring but I'm gonna pull it off you can probably see the difference on camera, especially just down at the base, the difference in diameter. So this one was a little worn down. What I'm also going to do is I'm also going to check to see if I could see any air through there. And of course, with everything else, spray a little bit of carb cleaner in there. And I, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reinstall the spring onto the new piece and I'm going to set it down in there and I'm going to turn it all the way in so not tight just seat it down once it stops it stops so all the way there now you want to back it out two turns so I'm going to go one full turn right now. So it's a half turn, a full turn, one and a half turns, two full turns. And I'm going to leave it right there. And then, if anyone else is wondering, this right here is your idle screw. So you screw this in, push this up, pushing this down, screw it out, pushes this down, pushes this up. So actually very simple so easy to work with easy to use and this right here is for the choke which of course it's I guess that's in yep that's choke out I'm an idiot but anyways like I said guys this is my first time doing this so if I can do it you can do it and I obviously don't have a way to throw it on the quad and start it up right now because Alyssa has the Camry and the jumper cables 
I did promise you guys we would have a new battery, but unfortunately, we do not. The carburetor rebuild kit came in first, so I wanted to get it done considering it was a nice, beautiful day and I had some time. Alright, so once we remove these top three bolts right here, we are going to take this off. There's a little bit of gasket on there. We need to check and inspect in here. And it all seems to be very clean. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean it out and reuse it. But, uh, you know what guys, I am going to take this off for you guys and I am going to replace this needle jet. So I'm going to remove this pin right here. Let's see if this is small enough to get in there. And it is. So you only want to use something small. Let's pry this off. I will set this to the side. I believe the kit came with a new one. So we're going to pull that off to the side. And we're going to slide this out. And, and back. Now there is a spring here to keep tension on here. So just be careful when you're taking this off. So this part right here hooks around this piece right here. So when you put it back on, what you want to what I want to do is you're gonna want to spin it around like that, slide it down in here, and just for now I'll take this off and we'll get to that later. So we are gonna pull this slide out. And we're going to remove this. So this piece right here is like a little washer that goes in right here. Just so you guys can see very clearly, right here goes right there. So we're going to take that off, remove this pin off here, and we're going to go right in here. Two more Phillips. Unscrew these. And you're going to want to check the slide as well for dirt and debris. This one's actually very clean, so you're going to have no problem with this. I'm going to unscrew both of these. And we're going to pull that out. And now we are going to push this jet out. And we're going to look at it. I guess it's going to be a good thing that I am replacing it. It is an 8 5J. It's a 5J8. So, as you can see, there is a little bit of wear down here at the top. It is a little dirty down here on the bottom. And we'll grab the new main, which appears like this. It did come with one. But I'm going to try to see if I can reuse this clip right here. It was on the third ring. Two rings exposed. So let's try to remove this off of there. And let's install this one right on there. Oh, perfect. This one says Y218. So hopefully this actually will work. I should probably compare the two in size. They both appear to be the same length. I probably didn't need to replace this. But why would I be going through all the trouble to show you guys how to do this if I wasn't going to do it myself? There we are. Put that back in there. Install this back to the appropriate setting. Which I believe that is the way that it went. And we are going to screw this back down. And remember, guys, don't tighten these down too tight. This is plastic and especially if you're dealing with an old carburetor like I am, this plastic is older than I am. Do 
screw there again. Just continue to screw that down. Boom. And we are going to take this. We're going to slide it right back into place. That looks beautiful. So nice knowing that everything on here is going to be brand new. Now, the nicer part would be if it actually works. Because that would be awesome. So. I believe I installed that backwards. So we'll take this out, we'll flip it around, we'll slide it back into place. There we are. We'll take this right here, pop it back, back up and out, install it just like that. Oh yes, much better. Now here comes the challenging part that everyone dreads. I'm putting this back together. That would be trying to line all this stuff up and get this spring installed. Which everything's been going really smooth so far. Alright, so it is now time to get this nice spring back into place. So this spring, you want to you want to push it down once you have everything seated properly. This is just going to be my way of doing it. Um, and I'm going to use this right here. It might not be the easiest way, there might be an easier way out there, but this is just going to be my first attempt to go around at it. So, as you can see, it can very much so be a pain. So I like to, what I like to try to do is I'd like to try to grab this, adjust it around, and hopefully get it seated, and voila, looks like it's in there. So we're gonna see if we can do this now. So I'm gonna take this, I'm gonna slide this over, Slide it up and in, and that, guys, looks to be about right. Man, I could play that Dora Explorer song right now. Yay, we did it, we did it. <laughs> All right, time to get this in. Hopefully this will be the easiest part. Grab my needle nose, grab it, push it in. It appears to be installed correctly. Let's just do a little test. This slides around doesn't fall out. It's probably in. So that appears to be in. Now we're going to put this back over here. Let's see, so when we give it throttle, this would move this jet up and down. So that's in. We'll push this all the way back. And there's a hole right there for the screw to go into, which is right here. So I'm going to put that right down in there and screw it right back on. Once again, another part that doesn't have to be ultra tight, but you do want to make sure it is slightly snug. There we are. 
And I got the new gasket right here, so I'm going to remove this. That seems to be pretty clean. Put the new gasket on. We're going to throw it right up on here. I don't know, just like so, nice little snug, doesn't have to be too tight. Beautiful. Alright guys, I would say we successfully rebuilt this carburetor. Looks so nice and so clean. We just need to replace this last gasket right here. All right guys, so side note, when installing this, if you adjust this with the throttle, as you're pushing on the throttle, you can adjust how much play the throttle has before you install it. So, definitely a good thing to do. Just wanted to throw that in there for you guys. All right guys, so I know I say a lot of dumb stuff, like you probably shouldn't brush your teeth after eating candy, but I said I was gonna wait for Alyssa to get here, I just got way too impatient. So I hooked up the jumper cable right now. I'm gonna do the first start without the choke on, and we'll see if she starts, because before she wouldn't start or run without the choke being on. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna give it a start. Let's try this out. back with the quad over here so she's running decent she's obviously warmed up while I've had time to go grab the other video camera so let's check her out make sure she's in forward make sure we are not leaking any gas go down and we are going to start her off nice and easy so she definitely runs by the way, there are no front brakes. We do have to address that. But let's take her out for a stroll around our property. Why don't we do that? Oh yeah, guys. She's running good. I hope. Don't want to jinx it out too much. Second gear start with her in the field. around the top do a little gas come check it out got a little bit of power so we'll come up here
She runs, guys. Nice, easy carburetor rebuilds what she needed. Definitely fun times. Alright guys, so Alyssa's back here. She's upset she couldn't be a part of the video. So, remember, <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Come on Sawyer, say it. Like, comment, subscribe. Like, comment, subscribe. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we'll see you guys next time.